Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalhoub. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on The Big Show, President-elect Trump tells Americans they should buy L.L. Bean. We'll examine whether this kind of decree will cause companies like Samuel Adams and Ethan Allen to lead a revolution. Plus, Ashley Judd wants to change emojis so they default to the darker skin tones. Oh, you think you're more woke than me, Judd? You're not more woke than me! <laughs> And finally, a news anchor is forced to change her wardrobe because it's the same color as her co-anchor's dress. Oddly, this is also why I'm never on Outnumbered anymore. <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She puts the able in adorable. <laughs> Entertainment correspondent Jill Dobson. His wit cuts like Ginsu. It's also machine washable. Comedian Scott Chaplin. Not just another useless Bill out of Washington, staff writer at the Washington Free Beacon, Bill McMorris. And he loves Yanks, but hates Wanks. <laughs> What's going on, Tom? Happy to be here. I <laughs> <laughs> Gavin McInnes from the Compound Media Show, Gavin McInnes. Let's start the show. When I think of L.L. Bean, one word always comes to mind. Controversial. An anti-Trump group is calling for a boycott of L.L. Bean after Linda Bean, one of the 50 family members that own the company, contributed 60 grand to a PAC supporting the president-elect. When Linda, a granddaughter of L.L. Bean's founder, heard about the boycott, she got in her car, seen here, <laughs> and drove to Fox Business Studios for an interview with Maria Bartiromo. First off, how do you respond to all of this? Well, it's a bullying. It's a bullying me personally. Yep. It's bullying now the company that didn't give the donation. I gave the donation personally to a PAC to support Trump. And, you know, my cousin gave to Obama four years ago. And he gave many more times the amount I did. Uh, but the point is, we should have that privilege. We live in America. This is a free country. Isn't I it? Thought. Obviously, Linda will have to resign from the board. What are you going to do about this? Well, I am not going to resign from the board. <laughs> <laughs> My instincts were wrong on that one. <laughs> Following the interview, Donald Trump tweeted, Thank you to Linda Bean of L.L. Bean for your great support and courage. People will support you even more now. Bye, L.L. Bean. Hmm. I guess Trump watches cable news. Gavin? Yeah? Uh, L.L. Beans, good company. Do you think Cool beans. Cool beans. <laughs> do, you, do you think that uh, this is, do you think it'll have an ill effect or a good effect on the company's uh, bottom line? Uh, I think it'll have a good effect. America likes Trump. He became the president. There's a lot of uh, uh, disgruntled ingrates, and I guess some of them shop at L.L. Bean, but you know what? These people are so vain and selfish that if they like the clothes at L.L. Bean, they'll do it anyway. They're, they're, they're all talk. Really? It's interesting because I would think, I would tend to think that the people in the anti-Trump crowd would be more likely to, you know, I don't think anyone on the right would boycott someone who supported no. Obama, right? But I, I feel like the, the feelings are so strong, Gavin. Have you looked at the internet? They're very strong out there. Yeah, but it's clothing. You know, we suffer more than they do because we get comedians and we like these comedians. <clears throat> we enjoy their movies. We, we enjoy actors' movies. And then yeah. they open their mouths and you go, you just ruined 30 movies for me <laughs> and about 20 stand-up specials. Uh -huh. Thanks, guys. They just have to avoid a pair of rubber galoshes. Which they won't do. Uh, which they won't do. Uh, what do you think, Scott? I mean, wh about what? I d <laughs> <laughs> Be more specific, because I'm not thinking about this much. Well, do you think that, uh, first of all, what, of all these boycotts. Yes. I mean, look. Of all of them. They want to boycott Walmart. Well, who does? The people. The people do, yeah. I mean, you've been hearing those but people of all the, tr the uh, you know, all the Trump stuff. There's yes. strong feelings. Absolutely. Uh, but you know, it's. <laughs> do, do you see that this board? I mean, there's a lot of people on the board. There's more than a handful of beans uh, on this board. L L. -L uh, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, you so, you're, so what you're saying is you can't because Scott, have you this read was, the story? This yeah. was I did read the story. It was just uh, super <laughs> uninteresting. Okay, so <laughs> she donated, and she was saying, "Well, my cousin donated to Obama a few years ago." So yes. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? And you're right. And but the reason I don't care is because no one is going to boycott this. No one. Oh, you don't think? No, they are. it's just talking. It's the internet. It's people yelling things. Uh, well, th but the guy, his, who is, the, you know about this guy who started the boycott thing. He's going around to every company. He's trying to hurt anyone who has any association. I mean, 150th of a board bill. 
are they serious? Well, the lady who started it is is very serious. Oh, she's I said got, a guy. It's a lady. She's got about seventy people uh, on this list, and I don't think LL Bean is going to suffer very much. LL Bean is famous for for boots, which are ugly, and Wait. for backpacks, which <laughs> only people with kids buy. And liberals don't have kids anymore. This is more harmful so to we'll, LLB yeah, so we'll be than absolutely any type fine. of protest, saying they have awful shoes. Oh, yeah, on, on Fox News. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> think, so yeah. so I, I, I don't think they're going to suffer for this at all. And I, I think the, the left has started to overplay its hand. You know, they got uh, Brendan Eich fired from Firefox. Yeah. And off of that, they thought that was the new norm, where as long as they got a Twitter campaign going, that people would that heads would roll at yeah. the time they called for it. And I think that actually Trump winning the election is leading people to say, wait a second, this is nothing but a bunch of bots flooding us with hate mail. Right, and yeah. a change.org petition, I'm sorry, it didn't rescue girls in Africa. It didn't rescue sex slaves of ISIS. It's not going to hurt L.L. Bean. That's These right. things are, are paper tigers. So you don't think the thing that happened to the Firefox guy, you don't think that could happen now? They got I, the guy fired I, because he, he donated some time ago to one politician. Yeah, right? and I, I think they're going to keep trying to do this. Yes. You know, they, they tried to do it to Ike. They're trying to do it to Mike Pompeo, the CIA uh, director nominee. Right. Today, Kamala Harris, uh, the newly elected senator from California, went on a whole spiel asking the director of the CIA, hey, what's your opinion on gay rights? And he's like, uh... The CIA. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So they don't really so, hold a position. So yeah, right. they they keep trying to make these things issues. I don't think they really have teeth anymore. Except I think for it's, People Magazine, well, which is on the list. For People Magazine is on Trump the list. Yes, at a, at a pivotal moment. And there are 38 stores on the list, including Walmart, uh, Bloomingdale's, Macy's. Uh, for the crime of There's carrying only Trump stores products that exist, though. I, no. <laughs> so you just get in hot shop. It's That's pointless. It. It's useless. By the way, we said the same exact thing. He just said it with uh, facts. Yeah. But yeah. I had a lot. Uh, there was some feelings going on. Here. I, I just want to say, about all the these things. boycotters we'll get and all you, these, the ones with these campaigns. Sorry. Not worried about it. <laughs> when you actually see who these people are. You go, you're insane. It'll be some sort of like belly button performer who has uh, pet dogs that are part of his act. And you go, you're the one who's been calling for the Ivanka Trump boycott? Yeah. You're a lunatic. But I think companies and employers assume these people have credence. But if you could ever see the people behind these campaigns, you would be looking at mentally ill lunatics in their basement. <laughs> <Yep>. Jill, <laughs> I think it's just too many people. You know, it's the... It's hard the, to keep up with it. Hard to keep up with who to boycott. I'm surprised to hear People Magazine is on the list because they had the writer who famously spoke out against Trump and said that he forced a kiss on her right. and groping her. So People Magazine had... Well, I would th they're probably being both boycotted by both sides. Yes. So if everyone's going to adhere to these boycotts, then no one's going to read People Magazine anymore. And people still people love people, be don't okay. they? People love people. people and love people, people who need people are the... What? Yeah. The people no, I think it was treat all. yourself. Treat your family to this week's people. Okay, moving on. <laughs> well, this week got a little blowback this week after they published an unverified document claiming that Russians had obtained compromising information on Donald Trump. Here's one critic of their decision to publish. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't just Trump. BuzzFeed faced a buzzsaw of criticism from all corners. On Thursday, Editor-in-Chief Ben Smith defended the decision in an interview with NBC's Chuck Todd. There was an era when you, you would when you would be the gatekeeper for information, you would say to, and you would say to your audience, trust us, we're keeping things from you, we have lots of secrets we're not telling you, but you should trust us. I think you could say that was a good era, you could say that was a bad era, that is not the present day. I think people love to throw the term fake news around to, me, to, to diminish anything they of don't course. like. But I think this was a real story about a real document that was really being passed around between the very top officials of this country. And then the question you say is, okay, it's okay for you, to Chuck Todd, to see this document. It's okay for me to see it. Okay for John McCain. Okay for the CIA. What's, mm -hmm. Why is it not okay for your audience? Mr. President-elect, your response? As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, I just, I just like playing that clip over and over. <laughs> uh, Jill, what do you think about, about this? I mean, BuzzFeed, they just throw it out there. You be the judge. That's what they said. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of questions here. One of them is, he says journalists have always been like, oh, we're keeping things from you, public. Yes. But trust us. I don't, 
remember any time when any newspaper I read, any news organization said, we have information, we're not sharing it with you. Yeah. Stay tuned for more lack of information. Uh -huh. So th that point was one of many that I was a little concerned about. Yeah, Gavin, I think I know where you stand on this, but uh, you know, do you read BuzzFeed? No, and I resent that they're getting so much attention right now. Oh, you yeah, really? It's one of the only moments of loss in the past six months, and I actually cling to moments of loss because I can't take all this winning. Well, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> you actually did. You had a rally in Times Square, I believe. No. What? We had a vigil. A vigil. Yeah, yeah they were candles. Yeah. Now, why we, were you, you dying of winning? You were yes. You're, you you were. We started up being tired of winning. Yeah. Then we got sick of winning, and then the winning got so intense that I had some guys in the hospital in intensive care, and as they were clinging, clinging to life, we got Trump out there going, "You're fake news," and I just watched my friends pass. Take a look at the uh, video we got here. Stop Trump. We can't take it anymore, Mr. Trump. Stop the winning. We are going to flatline. Mad Dog Mattis, it sounds like you're announcing a wrestler when you mention his name. And then what do we get? The cruise. GM has to make the cruise in America. And of course, the Dow. This ancient photograph of 19,000. I think it's 19,995. It's probably 20,000 by the time you see Gavin, you I like those signs. You, you, no words, just picture. It like, cost me a fortune. Uh, it's a huge picture of a Chevy Cruze. It says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Tucker was up there too, but not because he's a guy, but because he's got this prime time slot. So yeah. it's events that we were holding up yeah. there. And these events are all wins. And I need a break. Can we just, uh, I, when he hired his son in law, I thought, good. That's not so winning -y. It's not. <laughs> That's a little bit of a break. Uh, yeah. And then when he went on and on about Arnold Schwarzenegger's ratings, I went, well, that was stupid. Thank you uh -huh. for a moment of loss. I but see. At, besides that, it's just been win, 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 win. I, I'm with the liberals. Stop Trump. Okay. I wish uh, celebrities would make a video. They, <laughs> I think they will. Uh, Bill, what do you think? The, uh, the, do you think that BuzzFeed has any cred credibility with the, with the pro-Trump crowd? I, I don't think. BuzzFeed has any credibility with the pro-Trump crowd. And I, I think after I reveal this confidential memo that I oh, you've got, uh... obtained from a <laughs> secret Mongolian source. You did. Uh, and it's written on paper, so you know it's true. Uh -huh. And um, I'm just going to reveal it to our readers sure. here. Uh, nobody at BuzzFeed can read. No, oh, you're not supposed to say it out loud. Oh, I'm now sorry. they're going to know I revealed it. I, just read, I see. Um, they look, weren't supposed to know. They I were think circulating they this rumor build. that we know the cat pictures were to cover up ramp <laughs> illiteracy. <laughs> you know, everyone gives them grief for their cat pictures, but that they their argument is this, Bill. In fact, I'm going to go to to you, Scott, with this. Oh. You know, <laughs> look, BuzzFeed says we do the cat pictures because it pulls people in, Plus and then they, they read the hard ending journalism. Trump's making ladies. On each other. I think that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. They, you, you send some ladies some cat photos, and then boom, a little bit of urine. You know, right. sneak in the pen. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, I mean, it's it's surprising to me that they were the ones who released it because they are. They're just usually they just post lists of life hacks. And, yeah. And you know, uh, puppies with uh, cancer or whatever. Yeah. whatever I don't know. Um, <laughs> I did laugh Top at that. Ten one. Puppies, <laughs> yeah, with cancer. Cancer. You know, puppies with leukemia or something. Um, so it was impressive, but also, I mean, it has been passed around, right? I mean, it was. It's not a lie. Well, that was the reason it, for it posting it. It was passed around as an example of disinformation, as in these are the type of lies people are telling about you, Mr. Trump. Yeah. Oh, is that what? It, is that what? See, well, I like, yeah. for instance, Jill. I think people like John McCain got it, and he was like, ah, I don't want this, and he gave it to the FBI, and the FBI had it, and so people said they're passing it around, but nobody <laughs> liked it. <laughs> right, and it seems like no one is verifying that there's any legitimacy. So yes. for one news organization to say, well, we're going to put it out there. Because people have passed it around, it's not necessarily reason enough to believe that there's factual information there. Beautiful. Well, next story. And, and not only that. What? Uh, people like wait until I say I'm next so, story. I'm then. sorry. I'm sorry. But but Harry Reid, who lied about Mitt Romney's taxes, yeah. received this information and just said, well, "That that's too much. I don't want to hurt. I don't right. want to lie to the American people." Well, maybe because they're all doing that though. Maybe they're like, "Oh no, they know about the the." The peeing hookers, the, and, the and they pizza. don't want it to leak because everybody's involved. That's good. I, I wanted to move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Scott good. jumped on the back of Bill's <laughs> Last Friday, we discussed a controversial sketch that aired on the BBC called The Real Housewives of ISIS. A week later, the outrage has not abated. 
the skit appeared on a comedy show called Revolting. Now, a petition to get the program withdrawn has garnered over 38,000 signatures. Here's a clip. Hey, ladies! What do you think of this? <laughs> Awkward. What a complete beach. She knew I had that jacket. Copies everything. Copy this. Coming up next week. Come on, stop talking about his 40 virgins. Why can't he be happy with me? Uh, Ali bought me a new chain, which is eight foot long. So I can almost get outside, which is great. <laughs> The petition says of the sketch, this could cause people in the street to throw jokes at covering women whom are nothing like this program shows and could cause various future issues within our communities. I'm not sure that's the correct use of whom, but <laughs> <laughs> whom am I to say? It also pairs our beautiful religion with bombs and guns. This is an act of terrorism against Muslim women. Showing them in this light is not safe. Gavin, yes. uh, I laughed at the sketch. Yeah, it was okay. What? Well, I mean, I love that they're making fun of ISIS, but I thought the quality of humor could be a little even more incendiary. Ah, I see. Okay, you, like it didn't go far they, enough for no, you. No, no, I like that joke with the young uh, Muslim girl where, where she's got the suicide vest, and they go, oh, they blow up so fast. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you know what I love, Scott? That there's a, they walk, their doorway is a bomb hole in the wall. Why? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Why is it? I think good ISIS, I mean, I think they have doors. Yeah. Come on. But I don't like that the statement in this petition isn't saying the real fear. They're saying, like, oh, this is a misrepresentation of Muslim women, and they may be made fun of in the street. But the real thing is we are afraid that ISIS is going to blow stuff up again. Yeah, That's you're right. the fear. That's the so fear, like, oh, right. what, what about the Muslim women? What do you think? No one is going to watch that. It's wives of ISIS, not... People aren't going to go, oh, Muslim, all Muslim women. It's yep. just the idea of, um, you know, they're petrified, as everyone should be, but you do it anyway. Listen. Because it's fun. Scott, that was, I mean, that point you just made? It was almost a point. It was actually, no, I'm it saying, almost every once in a while. I mean, that was a good point. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> should we clap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I, kids. It was, thank you uh bill this this was i bet this is right up your alley i bet you laughed at it D i thought it was an isis recruitment video i almost joined <laughs> i was like i get this many women at once they don't respect the women do you see how little that chain was it was eight feet yeah <laughs> yeah. Like, eight feet. yeah but let's keep in perspective it's, how lost england is it is drifted out to sea that ship has sailed like just today we had a, a home secretary i think amber rudd i forget her name but she said um i think that we should give jobs to british people but for giving out jobs and then maybe foreigners and refugees uh -huh. after that yeah. which is earth's immigration policy everyone every country in the in the on the globe has that policy and she's getting called racist and she's in trouble because it was mean to the EU. I mean, these people are mental. <laughs> so well, at least they did it. That's so, probably racist what I just said. Well, look, Jill, do you think that this sketch, I don't think that they would do this in the United States, this sketch. I, I don't know. I could see Saturday Night Live doing something like really? this. Really? Yeah, okay. I could. Doing the, anything, Remember that girl who joined and she goes, Dad, off. it's just ISIS. Yeah, oh, it was the right, right. thing. That was awesome. Okay, you're good. Uh, yeah, with her backpack and then it Ooh. did cause an uproar. But I... My understanding is there are many Muslim people who do not want to be confused with being part of ISIS. And I think this group is doing them a disservice. They're saying, yeah. they're saying, oh, people are going to get confused. It's like, no, the more we can say, like, Muslim people are one thing. Extremists who want to murder everyone are something else. Let's point, point and laugh at them. That's it's not called the Real Housewives of Muslims. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there you go. Coming up, Bill, you want to make a point? Yeah. Ashley Judd, time has <laughs> white privilege. <laughs> About time someone did. <laughs> Ashley Judd is tackling white privilege by going after emojis. The actress and political activist, my favorite kind of multi-hyphenate, <laughs> tweeted this week, why are emojis yellow, which is just code for white. <laughs> Jeez. Why don't they come in black and make me have to change them? She also took up the matter on Facebook, of course, asking, what if emojis came standard issue in black? So we whites had to scroll to find a color that more accurately resembled us. Doing so would give her, quote, a glimpse of what it might be like to be a person of color in a white-centric world. Everything set to the standard of whiteness. Everything else, a variation thereof. She added... I still want to be called a non-person of color to designate my whiteness in contrast with person of color. It could help address the inherent flaw in whiteness 
as the default standard, and non-person of color has the added benefit of non, a negating word preceding talking about me and my race ethnicity. Now, wouldn't that be helpful and good for a while? I'd like to answer this in the form of an emoji. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I think we can do better than that. Ah, that's it. Uh, Jill, oh look, um, Ashley Judd, I think she should be working, don't you think? She should be she, on a she's film a great somewhere. Actress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. There, it sounds like a college thesis piece, and she is clearly a very smart person, but like her original, the first point she makes is that emojis are yellow, which means a white person. Uh -huh. oh, why does yellow mean white? Say it. Say Let's what it is. Say what yellow means. One. What does yellow mean? Yeah. She's not even good at being racist. <laughs> she doesn't understand racism. In order to counteract racism, you have to like understand it or have a... Uh -huh. Yellow means white. Are you crazy? Since when? What does yellow mean? Bart Simpson, it's code for white. We know what yellow means. <laughs> oh, well, look. It's not code for white. It's, we know what yellow is. No, we know. We know. Yes. But so what? Do you, it's why somebody you crazy. Look, someone posted the uh, the answer to her emojis, and she said no. But she wants to have to scroll. That's her only problem. She knows there should be different color emojis. She doesn't mind posting the white ones, but she said she should have to work harder. Do you agree, well, Scott? See, that's what you think it is. I th what I read out of it was that she is constantly sending people black emojis, and she doesn't doesn't like that she has to scroll for it. Uh, you understand? Yeah. Why would she so, send anyone a black emoji? You, you gotta ask uh, Judd. That's, that's my context. Hey, hey, absolutely. Hey, Why are you sending so girl, many black emojis? Sends a black Ashley Judd, is that up. her name? What's her name? It implies she wants to meet black guys. <laughs> I <laughs> think I want to walk a mile in the shoes of someone who's been you know, and that's where she starts. by life, and a, yeah, and by I think scrolling to find the right emoji is me re really understanding <laughs> what right. it's like to have struggle. people racist against me to have the struggle. Uh, look, do you think Bill at least can you can we say she means well? Can we say that about her? She uh, does. I, I, I think she's right. What? Uh, non is a negating term, so she nailed that part of the statement. <laughs> uh, in terms of, I mean, it's obvious why she's going after white privilege, because she thinks she owes her career to whiteness, which is ridiculous. She owes her career to being the daughter of Naomi Judd. <laughs> so, <laughs> and right. she's not going to go, hey, nepotism privilege, because that would be too self-indicting. Oh. And she feels distant enough from her white Kentucky poor cracker compatriots yes uh -huh. enough to go yeah it, those guys are the problem not me and Naomi <laughs> Judd it's and true. that's that's why she's harping on this Gavin you want to wrap it up quickly because I'm assuming I your last comment got uh, removed from the show <laughs> coming up here's the Bucky he's the Bucky Barnes to my Steve Rogers Andy Levy returns with halftime next and a brand new episode of the Red Eye podcast available subscribe on iTunes on foxnewsradio.com Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, hey Tom. How are you? Good, good. Excellent. I have a new chair tonight. You do? Yeah. How's it feel? Feels pretty good. Wow. It's not on wheels, though. I can't roll away. Oh. Yeah, which I've never done, but I feel like now the op is taken away from me. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Uh, L.L. Bean and the boycott. Tom, you, don't, you said you don't think anyone on the right would boycott something because they supported President Obama. Yeah. You should see my Twitter mentions during award shows. Yeah. Well, I would never go see any of those liberal Hollywood movies. Right. I don't think they, they, they live up to it, though. They're probably not. I think yeah. they see it anyway. Yeah. Sometimes they use another word instead of liberal, by the way. It begins with a J. Hmm. But that's hmm. either here or there. <laughs> Wait. No. Uh, Bill, you said the lady behind this boycott campaign is very serious. Yeah, I took a look at the website for her group, grabyourwallet.org. They've got the list of companies everyone's supposed to boycott. The second company on the list, it's alphabetical, is Amazon. Good luck, good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck. I mean, Barnes and Noble could be behind this. She's a Barnes and Noble lobbyist. <laughs> That's the only point. Yeah. Is she really? No. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a list. It's of a, a joke news show, Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> they have a list of additional entities to consider boycotting, and they have NASCAR on that list. I'm NASCAR. Sure, yeah, I'm sure that's going to be really effective. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, Scott, you said Bill said the same exact thing as you, except he said it with facts. Uh huh. He also he didn't come on a TV show and say the stories were uninteresting. <laughs> <laughs> Bad form, old sport. Bad form. 
Uh, Jill, you said you're surprised to see People Magazine on the boycott list since they had the article about uh, with the writer who said she was harassed by Trump. The thing is, not long after that, right after the election, they ran one of their standard puff pieces about Trump's quote-unquote astonishing journey to the White House, and that annoyed a lot of people. That's why Thank they're you. on the list. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, BuzzFeed defends the decision to publish the Russian stuff. Uh, Gavin, I said this last night, I'm going to say it again tonight. I think BuzzFeed publishing this dossier helps Trump. Because oh, yeah. Anytime Russia comes up now, he can just say, oh, you mean like the stuff in that, in that crappy dossier? Yeah, they're totally irresponsible amateurs who don't even understand their own mistake. They're cloaking it in this lie about how we shouldn't protect you from the news. No. But you should do your job and not barf out what every idiot sends you. Vet it. <laughs> okay. I actually, I disagree with you. I, to me, I, 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 that's what I thought at first. I thought, why the hell are they publishing this? And then I thought, look, this, as, as Ben Smith said, this memo, you know, media organizations had it, pol politicians had it, the intelligence agencies had it. I feel like if they've got it, and, and they're talking about it, let us see what's in it so we can look at it and say, oh my God, this is absolute garbage. Yes, but it wasn't presented as garbage. Sure, he had a silly little caveat where he said, some of this might be BS, but it was portrayed in BuzzFeed as semi-legitimate. I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I thought they did a <laughs> decent job of, of saying, they, they basically said, look, some of this stuff is verifiably false. So I don't know. I, we, yeah, that's right. So the tone should have been weird document floating around that is almost impossible to verify. Yet yeah. people keep taking it seriously. Here's the document, but that wasn't the tone. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they didn't quite go the whole Rathergate thing where they passed off the memo as 100% true. But just because you put, you know, this report is dog in the subhead doesn't mean that you listing every salacious detail in it mm. absolves you from doing it. Yeah. yeah, that's, that is, when did you stop beating your wife journalism except yes. it's the 21st it century, so now though. it's when it did you seems, stop on hooker's journalism, I don't know. Seems which a little, is more fun, It seems a little elitist of you, Bill, to, to think that only media organizations and politicians should get it. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. No. As a man of the people, I want to see everything. <laughs> Except a video, if it exists. Of what <laughs> I don't need to see Oh, that. you want to see I, that, I really obviously. don't. Uh, Jill, you said you didn't get Ben Smith saying there used to be a time when the media were gatekeepers who decided what information to give to people. And you said you don't remember any time when news organizations would say, oh, we have information, but we don't want uh -oh. to tell you. And now you're going to prove me wrong? No, no, no. I, just, I, I, I think what you said is a very fair point. I think his point was that... It used to be the media wouldn't publish anything it couldn't verify was accurate, and those days are gone. Uh, perhaps that's his point. I yeah. feel like he, he, the way he said it is as if we, as the media, are telling people, we have stuff, but we're not going to tell you. Yeah, I think he was yeah. alluding to that CNN thing where they said, these WikiLeaks are out, and we should be able to see those. Remember Cuomo said that? Uh, we should be able to see these and not you. Mm -hmm. It's illegal for you to look at them, but we can look at them. Right. He was trying to jump on that bandwagon yeah. to give himself credibility. Yeah. Uh, Scott, you said all BuzzFeed does is post their kitten and puppy lists, whatever. Uh -huh. uh, again, I just defend BuzzFeed or don't on the dossier. It's a silly argument to pretend they don't have a politics unit, a news unit, etc. They, they have all of that. Do they? Yeah, they really do. I'm not, you don't have to like them. You know, they publish stuff that I roll my eyes at. But, yeah. But it's there. Okay. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to say to that? Nothing. I just, you're like, uh, every, people keep making this argument. I just think it's a silly argument. I don't think it is a silly argument. I think that's what they're known for, and we talk about what people are known for. If you don't want to be known for puppies, then make the news the big point. I, I'm saying they, they often do. When? When you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. when I wanna, can I go on the main page of BuzzFeed right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right, this might take a while. Okay. <laughs> just do it quietly. How much you want to bet it's uh, either a dog again, or... Again, just do it quietly. Uh, Bill, you said Harry Reid got this info and said, well, this is too much even for me. Did he? I thought he alluded to the memo as containing evidence that Russia had, you know, suborned Trump. Yeah, and he said both he and David Korn had evidently had access to this dossier after it was dug up by anti-Trump... Uh, anti-Trump people at uh, FPS Fusion. Right. And the, the fact that this is such a damning document, the fact that they didn't publish it 
in October when they had it. Uh, petition to ban the Real Housewives of ISIS. Scott, you brought up the fact that the petition makes it sound like the show is about all Muslim women when it's not. Uh, yeah, as Tom said, it's Real Housewives of ISIS, not Real Muslim mm -hmm. Housewives. The petition also complains that the sketch, quote, pairs our beautiful religion with bombs and guns. It's not the sketch doing that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. We agree. Yeah. Uh, and just lastly on this Ashley Judd stuff, uh, Jill, you asked why yellow means white. Yeah, just so we're clear, Judd's argument kind of hinges on the fact that she believes the default yellow emojis are, quote, code for white. But they're not, and they're not what Scott was implying either. <laughs> According to the Unicode standard, uh, that color FFCC22 is a purposely, quote, generic non-realistic skin tone. In fact, they describe it as the color typically used for smiley faces, and that's most likely why the default emoji color is yellow, because the original smiley face image created by Harvey Ball back in 1963 was yellow. Oh. Boom! Exactly. Whoa. Exactly. Nailed it! That's fact, Boom. baby. I am done. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Coming up, a beautiful news anchor is forced to put on a jacket before she's allowed on TV. Speaking of beautiful news anchors... Andy Levy and I may have great rapport on this show, but before the cameras start rolling, there is tremendous tension, not unlike what you see in this video out of Australia. I need Julie to put a jacket on because we're all in white. I asked, her to, I asked her before we came on. Julie, you need to put a jacket on. Right out, I haven't I, had time. Does someone... Is come there on, I told, you, I told you two hours ago. We know Amber, in chat room. this is not... So I'm sorry, I've been flat out. Well, honestly. I'll call wardrobe and we'll get something. No, if, if, I, if you give me a second, if we can ask... I, I'm not sure who your lineup is today. If, if there's a, just a jacket okay. floating around out there, ask Danica. Yeah. Unless you want to run down and see if there's a jacket. No, you're right. No, open. you're right, because you told me um, it's fine, Sandy, but there can't be three of us. No. And I, is, and I made this clear two and a half hours ago. Amber, if it's an issue, I can, I can get on yeah, out of here. It is an issue. Go and grab a jacket. <laughs> Jenny, someone, uh, someone able to grab me a jacket, please. If it's an issue, I, I wasn't, can... I wasn't saying it for no reason. The wardrobe girls would be furious downstairs. I'm wearing blue for one, Amber. I, I don't know, want to be having this. I know, but it doesn't look like it. it someone, that, Jenny, get someone, in, a producer. I told her this two and a half. If there's one hanging up outside the control room, just get it on. There's a black one hanging up. There's a black one hanging up on the back if of there's, my if, one. If there's an issue, I'm, I can just head on out and get back to work. At that point, the picture cuts out. So try to imagine three women in white dresses. I've made this, I told you. If it's an issue, I'll just jump on out, honestly. Fine. Jump on out. If that's what you'd like to do. Come on, wearing a jacket is not... I asked you two and a half hours ago. It's not the hardest request. <laughs> Eventually, it was time to go on air. Time now to head into the chat room and joining me today is psychologist Sandy Ray in Melbourne <laughs> and Julie Snook in Sydney. A big welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Good afternoon. Uh, All smiles. See, it wasn't that hard. Jill, uh, <laughs> does this happen uh, in your yeah. experience? Yeah, you know, I have worked in news organizations where we love... Look at wearing, Jill. Oh, uh, <laughs> look, if it's a problem, I can just jump on it. If it's a problem... Yeah. If it's a problem... Is it it's a, a problem. If it's a problem, <laughs> she just keeps, like, helping the other one will say it's not. Yeah, well, look, but she, does. she asked her two hours before, Jill. <laughs> she, the, the, the main anchor has a point, right? You know, I, I love the main anchor gave a quote saying, okay, I overreacted. It gets a little stressful working in live TV. So that made me like her again. I guess it's okay. Everyone has screw ups. And I definitely have worked in live TV where we all love to like keep the monitors on and watch what was going on down in the studio because yes. there is tension and drama that goes on. And people always wonder, remember like National Enquirer back in the day would always be like, do Regis and Kathy Lee hate each other? They'd always have arguments because people like to think that People look happy on camera, but really hate each other. Right. So if you and Andy started back like a behind-the-scenes feud, it would get a lot of attention. People would like it. I like this all white. It looks good. I think we good. should all we should have all done this on the panel. Yeah. Well, you know, but that, that's the way it is in media, Gavin. You know, people. You don't have to hate someone to have tension. 
I mean, people who are, have, you know, good working relationships, sometimes it gets a little hot before going on the air. We have a lot of people out there who depend on what we do here. Yeah, and I didn't find her tantrum that uh, unreasonable. It was very vindictive and bitchy, though. And I think that women should understand that while they are on this crusade to make sure no one's mean to them, us straight males are the least bitchy of all <laughs> adversaries. Yes, yes. If you, like, they noticed that women were, they thought they were getting harassed online, and then they did a study and realized, actually, they're getting harassed less than men. And the ones harassing them are gays and women. Oh. We're, we like you. We want to sleep with you. Well, half of them are Milo, though, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's good. I think we're done with this segment, aren't we? <laughs> good day. Coming up, what not to do when working at Jimmy John's. Coming up tomorrow on the next Red Eye, Anthony Cumia, Dan Natterman, Mike Gunzelman, Remy Spencer. Dough is not for playing with. <laughs> okay, some dough is. But not dough used for baking into bread. Some employees at Jimmy John's in Florida were fired after they filmed themselves jumping rope with the restaurant's super stretchy dough and shared it on Snapchat. The franchise owners, who apparently don't appreciate workplace shenanigans, issued this statement. Our investigation confirmed the dough used in the video was immediately discarded after the incident. However, we do not condone this behavior. And appropriate action has been taken to prevent this from ever happening again. Uh, okay, uh, Gavin. Yeah. What kind of appropriate action do you think they take to make sure this doesn't they happen? They get fired, but every teenager does this, and you're eating garbage. What? I, I, Wait, I'm what? the wrong Wait. guy to talk about this. I don't think that was gross. I don't care. I'm eating just, it's just a bunch of corn, all this junk food anyway. You're just eating various forms of processed corn, so it got some dust on it. I don't care. What? People eat oysters. What's more disgusting than an oyster? I get it, yep, yep. And even if they spit in your food, I mean, you make out with people, that's eating their spit. Well, not my, you know. I'm not grossed out by anything. I don't make out with the kitchen people. Yeah, you make out with teenage boys. I won't make out with a kitchen person if I was single and she was attractive. Okay, ah, look. Okay. That's spitting in your Bill, food. Gavin doesn't care at all, but just to be clear, they didn't use this to make Jimmy John's food. They threw it away. I think it's fine. How do you know? Because There's they no said. Video of that. That's what they said. The investigation yeah. said. They've probably showed the, well. What sort of Jimmy John is that? Yeah. The what sort of investigation do they have? Yeah, they had Comey over there. Yeah, they threw it out after. That's yeah. it. That's the investigation. I bet they looked in the trash and they saw a big rope of bread. I would have. Mm. No, they, they didn't deploy an investigator, like a fast response yeah, unit to PR come lie. there. No. Assume, Bill. Assume they didn't make sandwiches out of it. Is there anything wrong with it? I don't think there's anything wrong with it if they did make sandwiches out of it. They cooked the bread. <laughs> Listen. I, 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 I'm with I Kevin. Agree. Jimmy John's, he, as long as it comes good. fast, I don't care. Uh, and it's a five-second rule. That thing touched the ground for less than one second. And before it was cooked. Okay. So as long as they Jill, cooked Jill, you want to get in on They're this. They're wasting company resources. If you take the dough that's used to make bread and you trash it and it gets thrown in the trash, that's a waste. These people should be fired. Wow. Look, I look at it as promotion. It's on Snapchat, which is a very popular medium <laughs> <laughs> and jump roping everyone loves that they're yeah, keeping it's active thing. it's a new challenge very positive attitude yeah yeah you want to keep active right Scott <laughs> but does it does, <laughs> would it bother you to see that going on uh, no, no, no. I did way worse things. At, you did. Uh, did you work in the fast food? Uh, not fast food. It was very slow food, uh -huh. uh, which gave me a lot of time to do terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. I maybe don't have to go to it because the show's <laughs> over anyway. <laughs> very special been thanks. We were saved by that one. Jill Dobson, <laughs> Scott Chaplin, Bill McMorris, and Gavin McInnes. That does it for me. Tom Shalou, your host. I'll see you next time. Okay.